Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with sausage and kale black lentil stew. That's right, for a dish to qualify as an authentic comfort food, it has to do three things. It has to be good for the mind, good for the body, and good for the soul. And this recipe certainly satisfies all three. Although I guess you could argue when it comes to being good for the body, that doesn't necessarily include the eyes, since this really isn't the most visually beautiful dish ever. But we're not going to worry too much about that, since it really does have everything else, plus is very easy to make. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by adding some carrot, celery, and onions to some melted butter. And we'll go ahead and cook those stirring over medium heat until they just start to soften up and maybe start to turn a little bit golden. And what we'll do once that happens is add whatever sausage we're going to use. In my case, some sliced andouille. Okay, my preference here would be for something a little bit garlicky, as well as having a little bit of spice and a little bit of smokiness to it. And please note, if you're using a sausage like this that's already been smoked slash pre-cooked, you can just slice it up and toss it in like this. But if you're using something fresh, like a hot Italian sausage, which would be beautiful here, what you'll want to do is cook those links first and then slice them up. But either way, we're going to go ahead and add some sausage, along with one bay leaf. And we will also at this point add the star of the show, some black lentils, which also sometimes go by the name beluga lentils, since they really do look very similar to that type of caviar. And we'll go ahead and stir all that together. And yes, of course, you can use any other kind of lentil you want. Right, the green ones are probably the most common. So don't feel like you have to drive all over town trying to find the black ones. Although they are very nice and beautiful, at least until they're cooked. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and add our chicken broth. And then crank our heat up to high until this all starts to simmer. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we can go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning. I'm going to toss in some freshly ground black pepper, as well as some salt. And depending on how salty our sausage is, we may have to adjust that later. And by the way, one reason I'm keeping the seasonings very simple here is because that sausage is so highly seasoned. So as far as flavoring this, that's doing most of the heavy lifting. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and bring that up to a simmer on high, at which point we're going to back it down to medium low and simmer it for 20 minutes before adding our greens, which should give us plenty of time to prep whatever we're using. And today I'm going to be using some kale. And this here is a variety they call dino kale, because I guess it looks like a dinosaur. I don't know. But what I do know is that we're going to need to remove that really tough fibrous center stem. And the easiest way to do that is to simply drag it through your fingers, which will liberate those leaves from that very, very fibrous fastener. And by the way, back in the day when people were starving, they would actually save those stems and pickle them, which unless you are in fact starving, I don't recommend doing. And then what we're going to want to do once we have those stems removed is go ahead and chop these leaves up before we add them to our stew. And the easiest method for that is to probably roll a bunch up. And then we'll cut those into ribbons. And then we'll sort of turn that pile and use our knife to slice across into what's basically a rough chop. And I'm only showing a handful here, but I ended up doing two big nice bunches. And then we're definitely going to want to wash those in a bowl of cold water and then let them drain in a colander until we're ready to use them. Okay, I've seen recipes where it says wash the leaves and then chop them, but that doesn't make any sense. I always feel like those are a lot easier to rinse off when they're chopped. And then theoretically by now 20 minutes has passed, so we'll head back to the stove and check our lentils, which as you can see have swelled up and sort of thickened our mixture, but they're not going to be cooked yet, which is a good thing, because the game plan here is to add our greens, and theoretically by the time our greens are cooked, in about 20 or 25 more minutes, our lentils will be perfectly tender and ready to serve. So we will go ahead and add our greens, and I hadn't planned on it, but I also added one diced tomato. Since it was so ripe and ready, it was about to explode. And of course, any time we're making a stew or soup, it's always worth taking a look around the kitchen or in the fridge to see if we do have anything left over to use up. I mean, you are, after all, the you of how you do stew. So take a look around and feel free to add in anything else you want, including, of course, any and all other types of greens. And then all we're going to do to finish this thing off is stir everything together and continue cooking on medium-low until our greens and lentils are perfectly tender which I'll take a wild guess and say is going to be like 20 to 25 minutes. And of course, you're going to check by giving it the occasional taste. And you're not just checking for doneness. You're also trying to figure out if it needs another touch of salt, which it very well may. But bottom line, eventually, if everything goes according to plan, you should end up with something that looks like this. All right, I think it should be fairly thick. But of course, if you want to thin it out, you could always add a little more broth. 
but that was tasting and looking pretty good to me. So I went ahead and served that up in a nice warm bowl. And like we admitted in the intro, this is not the most visually gorgeous thing ever. All right, if this stew was a blind date, it would be described as having a great personality. So to make it a little less goth, we'll go ahead and add a dollop of sour cream and decorate that with a little shake of cayenne. And that's it, our sausage and kale black lentil stew is done. So let me go ahead and grab a spoon and dig in. And by the way, the sour cream is not just a visual distraction. Right, that cool, creamy tanginess really works as a great counterpoint to this rich, earthy, very savory stew. And what this stuff lacks in aesthetic beauty, it more than makes up for by being very delicious and flavorful and profoundly comforting. Okay, you know those days at work when you just feel like jumping up on top of your desk and screaming to the entire office, what's wrong with you people? All right, you really can't do that without being fired. But what you can do is eat a big steaming bowl of this preferably with a slice of crusty buttered bread. And you'll see, all will be right with the world. At least for a few hours. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.